we're gonna go over strength training for board sports and we're gonna start right now. Okay, so when we're talking about strength training for board sports, we've got to look through the lens of, first of all, what are board sports? So if we're talking about surfing, skateboarding, snowboarding, these are all gonna be, you know, longboarding. These are great board sport examples that require a large amount of coordination. There's a lot of skill involved. There's a lot of work that has to go into the technical aspect behind the actual sport. So when we're looking at, like think about snowboarders, right? If a snowboarder is going down a mountain, they have to understand how to make specific cuts. They have to understand how to make specific cuts based off the type of snow that they're dealing with, based off the humidity, uh, based off the temperature outside. And then they have to understand how hard to make those different cuts and what to trigger as far as their muscles are concerned. So there's a lot of different factors that come into play. Look at somebody like a skateboarder. Skateboarders have to be explosive. They have to deal with these different positions. They have to have really, really stable ankles and then that leads to better performance. So for board sports, we should do resistance-based training. We should do different movements that can actually improve our overall performance. And now we're gonna go into those four key factors that you can use to improve your performance on the board. That first key aspect that I would train is actually working through and understanding eccentric strength. Okay, so this is a concept that I think a lot of board athletes miss out on. Okay, so when you land, if we look at somebody like a long jumper, okay, when a long jumper is sprinting full speed down a runway and they plant on the board, there is a very, very large amount of eccentric load on that plant leg. And that long jumper has to be able to then convert that eccentric loading into a propulsion that's gonna help them jump longer. So they have to learn the skill around absorbing that energy, absorbing that force, and then reusing it into that big time jump. Okay, so where does that bring us with board sports? If we're looking at, again, a snowboarder, you know, think about any of the crazy stuff that you see in the Olympics. There's a phenomenal amount of force that goes into landing a snowboard, okay? An absolute astronomical amount of energy goes into the knee joint, goes into the ankles and the lower back. And it's the same thing even with skiers, okay? So they have to learn how to handle eccentric loading when they land have to learn how to land properly. And what I would then do is actually use visualization techniques along with, I would use a contrast method of visualization along with slow eccentric work and along with plyometric work inside of the weight room, visualization, resistance-based training with that heavy eccentric, and then plyometric work to actually learn how to properly absorb those heavy landings. I would even use this for skateboarders. Skateboarders do a lot of crazy work and they're landing on a very hard ground, okay? It's the same concept, it's the same principles. And we have to do this unilaterally and we have to do this bilaterally. This is gonna be very similar to training a long jumper, but it's way heavier when we're dealing with these forces as a snowboarder. It's important that when we're doing this eccentric loading that we do it earlier in the year and it doesn't have a negative impact on their overall performance on the board, but it's a pivotal point behind their overall training. That second key factor is going to be improving dynamic trunk control. Okay, so think about dynamic trunk control as being able to hold that posture stable. The more stable my abs are, and I like to use the word trunk a lot better because it uses your back and your abs together and even your insertion points with your hips, that all plays a major role. If I can stabilize my trunk as I go down the mountain or as I'm riding waves out on the ocean or as I'm skateboarding or as I'm longboarding, I have much better control. I'm more stable here and then I can move my feet and my hips around my trunk as I quiet the noise of all the movement out on the mountain, out in the water, wherever it is that we're at. So if we can train that dynamic trunk control with crazy jumps, okay, with crazy plyometric exercises, we can use things like a hydro weight to improve those positions where we have to be able to stabilize our trunk when we're doing something at high speeds. That's gonna help us transfer those cuts to be more precise than wherever we're doing that, out in the water, out in the mountain, whatever it is that we're doing. So training that dynamic trunk control should be the second most important aspect behind your training for board sports. That third key factor is gonna be focusing on explosive work. The more explosive we are as athletes, 
the crazier our jumps are gonna be, the crazier we're gonna be with our acrobatics, the crazier, the harder we can also cut. So if we can cut on a dime, now that's gonna improve the way that the judges are watching us, the way that we're actually going down the mountain if we have to make up time with whatever we're doing. Okay, if we're in a race and we have to make a really hard cut on the snowboard, our cutting ability can improve if we're more explosive, especially if we're training the ankle joint and the quad properly to be as explosive as possible. Okay, now we can make better cuts, we can make harder cuts, we can make more explosive cuts, we can get our jumps more explosively. And because we did the eccentric training properly and because we did the training around dynamic trunk control, now everything starts to piece together and we perform a lot better at a higher degree. And that's gonna bring us into that last major factor behind board sport training, which is gonna be endurance, okay? Now, I would argue that board sports are probably the best trained as far as technique is concerned, out on the blacktop or out on the ocean or out up on the mountain. Probably some of the best technical training goes into board sports, but I think some of the absolute worst resistance-based training goes into it. There's some very prominent uh, strength coaches in the arena, but I think it could be pushed even better. And one of the things that I would argue is that endurance might be one of those things that's almost overtrained, and the dynamic trunk control along with the eccentric strength and the explosiveness could be more trained, which is gonna make the aerials and everything like that even crazier. But now we do need to have power endurance, okay? So I would argue if we're training power endurance, we wanna focus on especially quad isometric endurance, holding stable ankle positions for very long periods of time. So doing that isometrically, doing that while you're visualizing, doing that while you're going down the mountain or while you're out on the ocean, like pretending you're actually there or actually using specific modalities in training that now we have that technology where we can actually train these things isometrically and see down the mountain as we're doing that. I would also argue that in regards to power endurance, we also need to make sure our dynamic trunk control can kick into high gear after about a minute, a minute and a half, because that's gonna help us optimize that overall performance. We also need to make sure that we can do this repetitively over a long period of time. So there might be some credence to training, you know, endurance in a traditional manner on an assault bike or anything along those lines, but it would probably transfer best closer to the season once you're starting to do the specific visualization and the isometric actions. So train all these things very, very focused, okay? Work on that eccentric strength, become more explosive, improve your dynamic trunk control, enhance that power endurance, and also focus on the lower back focus on the knees, focus on the quads, focus on the stability of the ankle, and that's gonna lead to better strength training for board sports. And if you need help with your programming, make sure you head over to peakstrength.app. You can pick up our brand new app today to help you get on those periodized gains. Until next time, guys, peace.